All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Again, I'm just going to do some introductions here. Uh, I'm not going to ask you all to introduce yourself because there's just too many people to go through, but uh, I will go ahead and introduce myself to you. So again, my name is Jason Ball, and uh, I'll be your instructor today and tomorrow. I am a training partner of AVI SPL, and I've been doing Cisco training for 11 years now. Uh, I did uh, Tamburg training before that. I was part of the Tamburg merger, so I'm, um, I tend to be a little more focused on the video side of things than I am on just the audio side uh, because that's what Tamburg was. They were the video conference uh, company. And so, uh, so when I came across with the Cisco during the Cisco merger, I got up to speed on all the Cisco technologies uh, I currently hold. I think 19 different Cisco certifications. Um, I just kept getting ones I was told I was I needed to get, and <laughs> I ended up with like 19 of them. So, uh, in spite of uh, all the certifications I have, though, again, uh, voice and video are really my focus. Cisco collaboration—that's where my focus is. Uh, when it comes to cloud solutions or WebEx specifically, I was part of this solution. Uh, since its inception, uh, the first product that Cisco put out that was anything like this was called Project Squared. I don't know if any of you all remember that. I can't remember what year that was. 2014, I want to say, was when Project Squared came out. And then uh, Cisco, after about a year and a half, two years, they changed the name to Spark. And then later just unified Spark with the WebEx platform to create one unified cloud solution called WebEx. So we're going to talk about all that today, but I've been involved with that throughout the entire evolution of that solution up to what it is today. And so I am very familiar with it. Uh, also very familiar with on-prem solutions. So uh, I cover, cover the whole gambit from uh, cloud, on-prem to hybrid connections between the two. Um, so, you know, that's kind of my background on, um, technology wise, where I come from, uh, just a little more, uh, personal information about me. Uh, I currently live in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm on the East coast. I know we got a lot of people here that might be spread out. I am a little curious <laughs> where everybody is. What we might do tomorrow, uh, when we get started is I might pull up a map and have you guys just annotate kind of where in the world you are. That way I can get a kind of a visual idea of where everybody is. I had a plan for that today, but again, as I said before, I was not expecting this many people uh, in the class. I didn't know until the end of last week uh, that there was going to be this many people. And even then, I was told there could be up around 20 people in the class. I didn't find out until this morning it was going to be over 40. So <laughs> it's not a big deal to me. I don't care. Uh, I do classes um, all the time uh, that have between uh, 200 up to about 1,000 people in them. So it doesn't matter to me how many people are in the class. Um, had I known, though, there was going to be so many people, I probably would have bought, brought someone in with me that could have helped answer questions in the chat window a little bit quicker. Um, that way I could focus on the presentation. But it's not a big deal. We will get through it and uh, hopefully you guys will walk away uh, with some really good information. Um, interest uh, of mine outside of work, uh, I love working out outdoors, working with my hands. Uh, I do a lot of gardening. Um, I live on a fully wooded lot and I had to take some trees down in order to get light into my yard uh, so I could garden. So I've been doing a lot of woodworking too. I've been taking all that wood I cut down and doing different projects with it. So I really like working with my hands outside of the IT thing. It's something kind of opposite, very different than what I normally do day to day. And so, um, so anyways, that's a little bit about me so you guys know who I am. Let's go ahead and talk about the agenda of this course and uh, the information we're going to be covering throughout today and tomorrow. So I've divided the information out into nine different lessons. And I did submit this uh, outline for your company to approve before developing this class. This is a custom class developed uh, and catered specifically for you. 
However, sometimes people come to a class like this and you might have an expectation that wasn't planned in the course. So that's the kind of things I want to see your questions on. If you guys have a question about something, maybe it's something I'm not covering or uh, maybe the way I covered it doesn't answer your question uh, good enough, put it in the chat window uh, and then I will answer those questions for you. Um, and then uh, uh, I'll be able to provide that feedback. If I don't answer your questions verbally, I will give you guys a copy of the of the uh, chat messaging back and forth between us so that uh, you can have something to refer back to also. Uh, I am recording the session today. Someone asked if I am verifying, if I can verify the WebEx servers online and store in the recording. No, the answer to that is no, I can't. The only way I could verify that would be to end the meeting, wait half hour to an hour for the recording to finish queuing and downloading, and then go in and see if the recording's available. It's the only way I could verify that. So unfortunately, I will not be able to ver verify that. But I'm also recording, recording this session locally on my computer using QuickTime. I'm on a Mac computer, so I'm using QuickTime. I'm recording it locally so I can still make that video uh, available to you. Uh, so you will have a recording of the session today and uh, the session we do tomorrow. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, so what lessons are we going to cover throughout today and tomorrow? Um, again, we're divided into nine lessons. So we're going to start out with just an introduction to Cisco cloud collaboration because cloud collaboration in Cisco goes beyond just WebEx. There's a lot more pieces and parts to that. And so I just want you to be aware of the other components that are there. But then we're going to change kind of our focus in lesson one and really hone in on WebEx specifically and give you a good solid overview of the Cisco WebEx solution. Then we're going to go into lesson two, which talks about uh, and from lesson two onward, it's very much WebEx focused. We're going to talk about how to configure different components of the WebEx solution. So lesson two deals with doing a hybrid directory service integration with WebEx. Lesson three deals with doing a hybrid calendar service integration uh, with WebEx. And lesson four is doing the WebEx hybrid message service integration uh, with WebEx. And so those are the lessons we'll get through today. And then tomorrow we'll come back and we'll talk about, in lesson five, how to configure the Cisco Jabber messaging mode, which is not a hybrid service, but it's similar to the hybrid messaging service. We'll talk about comparison and contrast between those two services and then how to set that up and configure it in your environment. Then in lesson six, We'll talk about WebEx Edge solutions. That's kind of an introduction lesson because there's three major components of the WebEx Edge solutions. There's WebEx Edge Audio, uh, WebEx Edge Connect, and WebEx Edge Video Mesh. Then lesson seven, we'll go into the specifics of the WebEx Edge Audio uh, solution. We will not go into WebEx Edge Connect because that deals with third-party products that I don't have access to. Uh, but we will, in Lesson 8, go into the WebEx Edge Video Mesh Solution. And then Lesson 9, we'll finish up the week with uh, talking about WebEx Board, Office 365 integrations, and single sign-on. So let's go ahead and press on. Starting in Lesson 1, which is an introduction to Cisco Cloud Collaboration. So a lot of information we're going to cover uh, during the course of this lesson. This is a kind of long lesson here. Uh, we're going to start out talking about the different cloud collaboration solutions available uh, offered through Cisco. And there's three types of solutions that we want to address. The CUCM cloud, hosted collaboration solutions, and Cisco WebEx. But this course is designed to focus specifically on WebEx, so the rest of Lesson 1 will focus on WebEx. And there's three main components of a Cisco WebEx solution, WebEx meetings, WebEx messaging, and WebEx calling. 
Plus, there's a lot of hybrid integrations you can do with WebEx. So we're going to do a quick introduction to some of the main hybrid integrations that you can do, which include the calendar integration, directory connector, hybrid calling uh, integration, hybrid messaging, hybrid security, and uh, hybrid meeting integrations, which is also referred to as video mesh. So let's go ahead and begin with cloud collaboration solutions. Uh, again, there are three types of cloud collaboration solutions. Um, you have the uh, latest addition to the Cisco collaboration solution, which is the uh, CUCM cloud offering. And this is for customers who want to move their infrastructure to the cloud, but want to keep the familiar call setting features and so forth from the CUCM. And so for those customers, Cisco now offers subscriptions to a cloud-based CUCM, which is hosted by Cisco themselves. Then similar to the CUCM cloud offering with and which has a much longer proven kind of track record is the hosted collaboration solution or HCS. And so the main difference between HCS and CUCM cloud lies in who's hosting the solution where CUCM Cloud is hosted by Cisco, uh, HCS solutions are hosted by Cisco service provider partners. And so these are companies such as your Verizons, your AT&Ts who have the facilities and the capabilities to manage and maintain their own infrastructure for hosting these solutions. Then the third uh, cloud collaboration offering through Cisco is the familiar Cisco WebEx solution. So again, there's three main components to this solution. There's messaging, meetings, and calling. Uh, Cisco WebEx has been around for over a decade, but Cisco's added a lot of significant changes to it in just the recent years, um, which has really kind of built up this solution to be a much more robust and uh, diverse solution. So let's examine each of these solutions a little bit closer, beginning with the CUCM Cloud solution. Uh, this is uh, a kind of pricey solution. There is a cost to the CUCM Cloud that could uh, be prohibitive for smaller companies to be able to invest in it. Um, therefore, Cisco does recommend that companies who are going to use the CUCM Cloud solution have a thousand users or more. Otherwise, it's just uh, cost prohibitive for them to do it. Uh, for those smaller companies, they would be recommended to go with something like WebEx. Uh, so companies who do move to the CUCM Cloud will still have secure access to the management web interface. And then from here, they can manage users uh, and phones. They can provision multiple devices and use all of the same great tools such as bulk provisioning and auto provisioning that they used uh, already in the CUCM. Administrators can also customize and manage services, um, integrate with uh, LDAP directory service, uh, utilize single sign-on. <clears throat> the only limitations they're going to experience are going to center around, center around access to the OS administration and serv serviceability web pages because they're working within a tenant environment now. And so those more advanced features are going to be a little more restrictive than they would be with an on-premise solution. But your day-to-day -day operations, 100% transferable to what they're already used to with an on-prem CUCM. In addition to the management interface, customers can also utilize a secure user self-care portal uh, from this portal, each individual user can manage their own phones, voicemail accounts, presence availability, conference settings, uh, plus a lot of other settings as well. So that is still available in the CUCM Cloud solution. Cisco's hosted collaboration solution provides industry-leading cloud collaboration services from Cisco's partners, uh, specifically service provider partners. So if you have an on-premise CUCM-based collaboration solution or aging premise uh, UC equipment, HCS provides a clear migration path to the cloud-based collaboration. 
An advantage of HCS over CCM Cloud is that the solution can be deployed for any size organization because the services come from the Cisco partner, and so they can offer it at, at a lower, more reasonable price. Uh, customers get cloud benefits while retaining control and ownership of all of their collaboration services. And with the Flex plan, you can choose the right subscription based on your business size and needs. Uh, and each option includes technical support. So a Cisco Enterprise Agreement allows customers to reap all the benefits of providing services for your entire business. And you can save more by adding other Cisco technologies to your existing solution. Active users allow companies to purchase meetings based on usage. So anyone can host a meeting and you only pay for those services that you actually use. And then finally, named user uh, licensing provides meetings, calling, and team collaboration services to individuals, teams, or departments, depending on how you want to set it up. And so companies can buy what they need today and then add more as they grow. So it makes it a little easier for a company to scale. This brings us to the Cisco WebEx solution, which again can be divided into three categories, meeting, collaborating, and calling. Now WebEx meetings is that same powerful tool that's been in use for many years, which allows multi-point multi -point conferencing in the cloud. Participants can join via a WebEx meeting client through a browser or using WebEx Teams using a phone or telepresence endpoint. All of the same tools that have traditionally been used with the WebEx meeting are still available. Plus, Cisco's added a lot more enhancements like uh, uh, some of this artificial intelligence and uh, so forth to their meetings. Uh, WebEx meetings allows for high-quality voice and HD video communications, content sharing, polling, annotation, plus many other features that are supported. CMR Cloud through WebEx meetings can be extended to a CMR hybrid meeting uh, deployment using the video mesh node. Then you have WebEx Teams, which was formerly known as Spark, which is the client that can be installed on any Windows or Apple computer, tablet, or smartphone device. WebEx Teams allows for point-to-point -point messaging or group messaging uh, in spaces. And this high, um, highly secure messaging solution allows conversions to be escalated to a voice or video meeting uh, where content can be shared and a whiteboard application can be leveraged. All your whiteboard notations are automatically saved into a WebEx Teams space which allows collaboration to continue even after the meeting ends because people can access those whiteboards, continue to annotate on them, and share them with everyone else in the group. WebEx Teams also supports the upload and download of documents, which I'm using to share a document with Sherry, and plus other uh, integrations and bots which can be leveraged uh, through the application as well. Then, kind of the latest addition to this solution is WebEx Calling. Now, technically, WebEx Calling is a tool that's always been available with the WebEx solution. Um, however, since Cisco acquired Broadsoft, they've been working diligently to bring the Broadsoft Calling features into WebEx. So the new WebEx Calling uh, solution is what we're kind of referring to here. And just like the older Spark calling solution, WebEx calling allows phones to register to the WebEx control hub. And then from those phones, users can call out over IP or across the PSTN. Uh, alternatively, there's also a WebEx calling application that can be used from any Windows or Mac computer, tablet, or smartphone device. And recently, Cisco's built that WebEx calling capability back into the WebEx Teams application as well. So you have one application to do everything. Now, the real power behind WebEx calling uh, with the Broadsoft backbone is that uh, the new WebEx calling brings more calling features 
than were previously available with the spark calling solution. And that's the significant difference. Plus, even with the WebEx calling, there's other ways you can do the WebEx calling component. And so we're going to look more into that here in a few slides. All right, let me just check and make sure we don't have any questions here. Oh, I'm just trying to figure out this question. Is every time you go back and forth from sharing, the WebEx window maximizes? Uh, hopefully, it's not creating any issues now. If it's still creating issues, let me know in the chat window. But I don't think, I'm not sure what was going on there. All right. So let's go ahead and press on. Yep. So, <coughs> couple these three great components of Cisco WebEx solution with the featured WebEx products and you have a complete customizable and dynamic collaboration solution. Some of the great features and products include WebEx board, which we'll talk about tomorrow, uh, plus other WebEx endpoints, which are all really great. Uh, plus you can do these integrations uh, with other tools which are commonly used by companies such as Salesforce and so on. There's many other tools out there available that you can set up these integrations with. In addition to the featured products are many other security and management tools that all come with the WebEx solution and are offered to WebEx customers at no additional cost. But for those people that want to enhance their security features, uh, they can be bolstered up with a subscription to Cisco Umbrella or Cisco Cloud Lock, with both, which both integrate seamlessly into the overall WebEx solution. <coughs> now, since this course is focused on WebEx, let's take a, a little bit deeper dive into the components that make up the WebEx solution. Um, there's many different ways users can join a WebEx meeting. Uh, users can join uh, using the WebEx meeting application, using WebEx Teams application to join into meetings, or using WebEx calling. Uh, the WebEx meeting application is a similar experience to what users have traditionally experienced through the WebEx meeting web portal. Content can be shared by any participant in the meeting, uh, annotation tools are available, and polling questions can be incorporated uh, into the med WebEx meeting as well. That's pretty standard. It's always been true, right? Personal devices, such as smartphones and tablet computers, can be used to join into meetings using the WebEx meeting application, the WebEx Teams application, or WebEx calling application. So you can use your personal devices as well. And WebEx endpoints can also be used to join into your WebEx meetings. So the WebEx board has an integrated camera, microphone, and speakers. that allow it to be used uh, just like any other WebEx endpoint for joining meetings. Uh, but in this image that I'm sharing with you here, notice that the WebEx board and another WebEx endpoint are in the same conference room facing each other. In this type of setup, the intelligence that's built into each of these endpoints allows them to detect one another during a call setup. What will happen then is the camera, microphone, and speakers of the WebEx board will not be used to call into the meeting, but the endpoint will still join that meeting so that the annotation feature of the WebEx board can be used to share with other participants in the meeting. Then on the other endpoint, they can actually just choose to share the whiteboard and that content is shared in. And this is just another great demonstration of the technology that sets Cisco apart from other competition. <coughs> Cisco has established themselves as the global leader in many venues, including on-demand applications for collaborative business in the cloud through the Cisco WebEx product line. Using Cisco WebEx collaboration products, you can conduct online meetings over the web 
in real time from anywhere at any time on any device. That's been kind of Cisco's slogan for a while. The WebEx solution is a web-based software as a service conferencing solution that supports high definition video using the H.264 codec and any PC or mobile device with a camera, microphone, and speakers and internet connectivity can join those meetings. The audio connection can be deployed either over IP through the web client device or with a dedicated phone using the callback or dial-in feature across the public switch telephone network. There are four different types of WebEx meeting platforms that can be used for different purposes. You have the WebEx Meeting Center, WebEx Training Center, which we're using today, WebEx Event Center, and WebEx Support Center. Cisco WebEx Meeting Center is kind of the pinnacle product and foundational product uh, solution that combines your file and presentation sharing with voice, high definition video, and new meeting spaces. Cisco WebEx Meeting Center is available as a cloud service, which means that there's no need to purchase uh, and support a bunch of endpoints and servers. Um, this allows small and medium-sized businesses the ability to leverage voice and video communication technology without a large initial investment. Uh, Cisco CMR, Collaboration Meeting Room Cloud, and CMR Hybrid leverage WebEx Meeting Center uh, to connect WebEx users and traditional telepresence endpoints together in a single collaboration environment while preserving the end user experience. Through the web portal, your personal Cisco WebEx account can be accessed to create meetings both ad hoc and scheduled. Existing meetings can be modified from the date and time of the meeting uh, all the way down to who should be attending the meetings. Meetings can also be launched uh, directly from the web portal. Ad hoc conferences can be initialized with a Cisco WebEx productivity tool using Cisco WebEx one-click features. Cisco WebEx OneClick allows you to start a meeting and invite attendees instantly from your desktop, taskbar, or favorites applications. The ad hoc meeting information can be pushed to other participants through email and instant messaging, and then conferences can be scheduled regularly through the groupware client using Cisco WebEx productivity tool and email client plugins, which are really easy to set up. Integration is available with Microsoft Exchange and Lotus Notes, and Cisco WebEx is not a one-size-fits-all single solution, although the main Cisco product can fit most business needs. Cisco WebEx includes several products that cater to different specific business requirements. With Cisco WebEx Meeting Center, there are different methods to share content between participants, and content can be shared from any participant within the WebEx meeting. The host of the meeting will have the uh, Cisco WebEx ball icon displayed beside their name. Uh, using your mouse, you can scroll over another participant's name, which will reveal the WebEx ball, which will be grayed out for that participant. So to pass the ball, so to speak, uh, to another participant, simply click on the grayed out ball beside their name, and then they become the presenter and have the ability to share content. You can also click on the grayed out ball beside your own name in order to take control of the ball. And in WebEx meetings, any participant can do this. In WebEx Teams, uh, or not WebEx Teams, but in WebEx Training Center, WebEx Event Center, um, you have to either be the presenter or the host to be able to pass the ball. Um, right, so uh, if another participant is sharing content and then someone clicks to pass the ball while they're sharing content, the content that's being shared will immediately drop from the session. Uh, whoever is sharing Content can choose to share a document application or their entire desktop. 
if a participant is sharing their desktop, another participant can request remote desktop control. A uh, pop-up will display on the screen of the presenter who must grant permission before another participant can take control. Resuming control of your own desktop is as simple as moving your mouse, and that takes control back. Once you have resumed control, the whole process has to be repeated in order to grant someone else uh, permission again to take control. Cisco offers an integrated whiteboard application and annotation tools uh, with each WebEx session. With the whiteboard application, a presenter can add uh, text blocks, draw shapes, lines, or even draw freestyle. Different colors can be used to make uh, objects and lines more pronounced. And all participants within a meeting uh, can also use these name arrows uh, to point out specific things, make selections, that sort of thing. We're actually going to use these tomorrow. Um, so these are the same annotation tools uh, that have been used with WebEx and uh, for a long time. You can also use it during content being shared, like a PowerPoint presentation, where people can point to different specific things in a, in a presentation. Cisco WebEx Meeting Center makes communication across distances a whole lot better by engaging participants. Uh, emphasizing key topics in a presentation and uh, preventing the spread of the coronavirus. So all good benefits to WebEx. Cisco WebEx Meeting Center also has the capability to scale from uh, one all the way up to a thousand attendees. Used to be 500. Uh, they've changed that in the last few years ago. Uh, you can now support up to 1,000 participants in WebEx Meeting Center. The host then has the ability to control what privileges each participant has within the meeting. Uh, the host may only want participants to see and hear the information being shared without offering any kind of interaction, such as, um, uh, for example, a CEO making a state of the company address might uh, be addressing the entire body of, of the employees within the company and therefore doesn't want to have the feedback or anything from the employees because they're just making a statement to everybody to inform them of what's going on in the company. Uh, if a presentation is being made and questions about the content are anticipated but time is of the essence, a chat only feature can be allowed for the majority of the participants and then a smaller team of panelists can be used to help answer those questions uh, as they're being asked. And that allows the main host to continue on with the presentation. Another great feature offered with Cisco WebEx Meeting Center is the ability to record meetings when the recorder works, right? So we had that problem today. Uh, with Cisco WebEx Meeting Center, recorded meetings are stored in the cloud. And then participants can be invited to review recorded meetings and optionally download them for uh, later reference. WebEx does have a storage fee for recording, but since uh, recordings can be downloaded, hosts can download and then delete the recordings from the meeting center. And then host access to the recorded meeting um, can be granted on their own on-premise streaming server. Uh, in addition to all these other features available with a WebEx Meeting Center session, files and applications can be transferred to participants as we tried to do earlier uh, within a WebEx session. Um, when there's fewer participants, that certainly works a little bit better. It was a little slow today, uh, but we found a workaround. This host uh, simply has to enable the option to transfer a file pop-up window, as you guys saw before, will appear with two options. There's a share file option and a download option. The host who's sharing the file needs to select the share file button and then select the file or application they want to share. These selections uh, <coughs> will all appear within the same pop-up window on the participant's computer and then they simply need to click on one of the items in the list and then click the download button and then the item will allow the uh, WebEx uh, or allow the uh, document to be downloaded through WebEx onto their 
personal computer. So that's all WebEx Meeting Center. And I, I wanted to take some time to really explain all the features, although you guys may have already been familiar with them. Uh, I wanted to explain all the features on Meeting Center because when you start looking at Training Center and Event Center, they are built off of that Meeting Center platform. And so all of the features available in Meeting Center are also available in Training Center and Event Center. The difference is some extra added features Cisco tacked on to Training Center and Event Center to set them apart. So uh, Cisco WebEx Training Center, in addition to all these features offered in WebEx Meeting Center, um, can also deliver highly interactive classroom environment uh, for online training with video, breakout sessions, that's kind of one of the key things that sets it apart, and hands-on hands -on learning labs. This application of WebEx can be used to train employees or offer online courses. Uh, I use it all the time for courses that I offer. Uh, scheduling tools allow administrators to schedule a series of sessions, uh, offer open attendance, or require registration. It's a box you check when you set up, uh, schedule the, uh, the, the session in the beginning. Uh, emoticons allow participants to interact with the presenter and uh, as well as each other. One of my favorite emoticons is a coffee cup icon, which can display uh, that when you're on a break. We'll actually use that one when we go on break a little bit later. I'll have it, make sure everybody has a chance to pull that icon up. And then a hand can be raised uh, if you have a question or other icons can be used uh, at the presenter's discretion to demonstrate participation. Like you can do a, uh, do you agree or disagree question? And people do a green check mark or a red X if they agree or disagree to a statement, that sort of thing. So it gets the participants involved a little bit more. Uh, there's also an attentiveness tool, uh, which is built in that shows if participants are on the uh, web page, the WebEx page, uh, or if they're viewing something else on their computer. Um, yes, I can see all of your attentiveness. I can see if you're somewhere else. It doesn't mean you're not paying attention, but it does mean you're not necessarily looking at what I'm showing you. And I get a little exclamation mark that shows that. Uh, that's what this is right here. This, uh, if I can get my pointer over here. There we go. This little exclamation mark you see right here is the attentive, uh, attentive, attentiveness, um, whatever it's called, attentiveness tool. And it shows up beside each participant's name, and that way I can see. Uh, if it shows up beside your name, it means you're not looking at what I'm looking at. That's all that means. Uh, what else? Um, so these are just a few of the options available on the WebEx Training Center solution. Uh, obviously, there's a lot more. You can still do the polling. You can do question uh, like a test, like a question answer test with grades and all of that, not just who answered what, but it, you can have right and wrong answers. You can grade them, that sort of thing. So uh, it's really cool what you can do. The breakout sessions, though, is probably the greatest feature uh, of WebEx Training Center. WebEx Event Center provides uh, the t all the tools you need to deliver cost-effective and successful online events. These events could range from event planning and promotion to uh, delivery and post-event follow-up, uh, as well as campaign uh, reporting. These are your town hall events, right? Uh, WebEx Event Center allows companies to host events with up to 3,000 participants controlling every aspect of the event from who's invited to following up with participants after the end of the event. Uh, Cisco WebEx Event Center can be used to uh, qualify, track, and cultivate leads for your sales initiatives and can capture uh, attendee information, which can be stored and accessed at a later date and time. So uh, really good uh, tool for those town hall type events. Uh, I also use Event Center a lot for some other uh, things I do called Tech Talks uh, for Cisco. 
and uh, that's where I'll have, uh, I could have, I usually have between 200 to 1,000 people in those uh, Tech Talk events. So technically I could do it with um, just um, Meeting Center, but by doing it through Event Center, it helps me track who's attending, capture their personal information. They have, I can make them uh, register for the courses. Uh, and then if I have people registering for a bunch and not showing up, I can actually restrict them if I wanted to, or they're not able to register for future uh, tech talks I offer, that sort of thing. So there's ways to control that access using um, Event Center that you can't do in just regular WebEx Meeting Center. There is another WebEx solution called WebEx Support Center. This one's kind of different than the rest of them. Uh, WebEx Support Center provides real-time IT support and customer service to employees and customers from anywhere in the world. The WebEx Collaboration Cloud, which is a real-time global network that provides flat, fast, reliable, secure application delivery, provides all Cisco WebEx Cloud services. So uh, Support Center is just a way you can actually put on... Uh, uh, employees computers for example a support link when they click on it it opens up this chat session with one of your support representatives automatically through the WebEx support center there's also a feature like this by the way built into WebEx as well so WebEx teams uh, is the next thing we want to talk about that so we've talked about WebEx Meeting Center, uh, WebEx Meetings in general, which is divided into Meeting Center, uh, WebEx Training Center, WebEx Event Center, and WebEx Support Center. Uh, now we're going to go on to the next part of WebEx, which is the WebEx Teams. And WebEx Teams is all about bringing you the tools uh, you need to be able to collaborate uh, with one-on-one uh, -on -one persons or in small groups in a space. Um, so bring everyone together easily and quickly into a WebEx team space, and then it will enable everyone to see and share all the information they need to be able to work together productively. You can send messages, share files, create or edit whiteboards. Uh, you can do all of this securely, and you can do it again on a point-to-point uh, -point connection with one person or uh, with a smaller group of people. I guess it would be a larger group of people, but it would be a small group of people. Uh, you can also add people to your shared space easily from your company directory just by typing their name, and then their uh, address information should come up, and you can be able to just click and add. Uh, or simply enter someone's email address and then uh, start teaming with that customer, partner, or anyone else you might need to work with. They don't have to be within your own uh, organization. Everyone has a seamless experience for their spaces, whether uh, created internally by an, uh, or by an external colleague. Uh, no account switching or loss of content will be experienced, and everything is always uh, available to you right there in one place. So really useful tool. Uh, you can use the WebEx app hub to easily integrate with other apps and, and streamline work. You can integrate with other tools for uninterrupted workflow. WebEx Teams delivers pre-built solutions with third-party applications from vendors such as Microsoft, Google Cloud, and Salesforce to deliver complete collaboration experiences. With Microsoft Office 365, Microsoft Exchange, and Google Calendar integrations, you can view your meeting list right in WebEx Teams making it easy to stay on top of your upcoming appointments and join meetings with a single button to push. New meetings are scheduled with ease uh, automatically, including all the people you need um, and all the join details you need uh, to be able to join into those meetings. Further, users can share and edit files from Microsoft OneDrive, uh, SharePoint Online, uh, right in the WebEx team space, eliminating app switching and file sprawl. 
Other integrations can be set up using the WebEx App Hub to connect your teamwork in WebEx Teams with the work happening in other tools such as ServiceNow, Trello, Asana, Salesforce, and Jira. So lots and lots of tools available. As mentioned before, WebEx Teams uh, can be used to join meetings, use high quality video meetings, screen sharing with annotation and whiteboarding seamlessly from any device to boost creativity, enhance decision making. Because everyone on a productivity team participates, anyone can start a WebEx Teams meeting. Uh, you can, uh, let's see here, um, all the, uh, you got chat files, uh, whiteboards uh, shared during meeting, all of this can be easily reviewed by anybody uh, at any point in time. Now, that's WebEx Teams. Let's talk about WebEx uh, Calling. In order to understand WebEx Calling feature, I think it's important first to um, establish a foundation about about uh, where WebEx calling as we know it today comes from. Um, so in order, um, <clears throat> in order to understand a little bit about the Broadsoft hierarchy, uh, you first need to understand that Broadsoft was the company Cisco acquired in 2018. And there are two autonomous cloud offerings to the Broadsoft solution, Broad Cloud and broad works. Now, broad cloud is the term used for the legacy Broadsoft cloud-based hosted PBX solution. That broad cloud solution is now the backbone of the Cisco Flex offering, which is WebEx calling for value-added resellers or VARs. Broad works is the technical name of the application that Broadsoft sold to service providers, which provides the functionality of the platform. Therefore, it's easiest to think of Broadworks as a service provider hosted cloud data center that allows customers to subscribe to cloud calling services through a service provider. Now, both BroadCloud and Broadworks offer contact center services as an add-on option, which is called WebEx Contact Center. WebEx Contact Center can also be sold and leveraged without a subscription to BroadCloud or BroadWorks by simply integrating it with an on-premise enter enterprise deployment using Cube. But we're not talking about Broad uh, Contact Center in here, so that's all I'm going to say about that. Now, to further understand this, um, BroadWorks is also the same application that powers broad cloud. So think of Broadworks in this context as the engine behind broad cloud, although you typically hear the term Broadworks in, in context of a service provider. And so this is where it can get kind of confusing. And what I want to clarify for everybody here is when you're reading Cisco documentation about setting up WebEx calling, it'll say broad works sometimes, or it might say broad cloud, or it might say broad soft. And we're talking about the same thing with all three of these, essentially. Just remember that broad soft is the company, broad cloud is the VAR solution uh, for WebEx calling, and broad works is the engine that powers the whole thing, all right? Now, how does this work? Uh, when a local gateway is set up for WebEx calling, this gateway will communicate to Broadworks through remote session border controllers configured in Broad Cloud. Uh, the calling administration portal, or CAP, for the WebEx calling deployment is actually the web interface for Broadworks uh, within the Broad Cloud solution. Now, some calling uh, services can be enabled in the WebEx Control Hub, but when you go in to edit the services, you're actually redirected 
to the calling administration portal or CAP within BroadWorks. One of the uh, great assets to the new WebEx calling solution is uh, the WebEx calling features, which are now available through the solution. So there's two categories of features associated with WebEx calling, and each category can be configured on a per site basis. All WebEx calling features are configured in the WebEx calling administration portal. And uh, then you've got what's called default site features, which are always on. They're just not being used unless an administrator goes in and configures them for use. But they're kind of a standby, always on uh, feature. Then you have what's called provisionable site features, which must be enabled within the WebEx control hub first and then configured within the WebEx calling administration portal. Now, notice on this slide that auto attendant is listed in both categories. And that's because technically a provisional site feature, uh, it, it is a provisional site feature, but it's enabled when the WebEx control hub is first set up for a customer. So it, it kind of falls in both categories. And that's the only reason it's listed in both places. Uh, WebEx Calling, uh, powered by Broadsoft, uh, requires phones that register to the WebEx Control Hub to be running the multi-party phone or MPP software. Phones that are registered to a CUCM are running what's called an enterprise software. Therefore, MPP phones either need to be ordered from Cisco with the software already installed on them, which is great for greenfield deployments, or uh, existing enterprise phones need to be migrated to the MPP software before they can register uh, to the WebEx Control Hub. And so that would be ideal for brownfield deployments. Now, migrating phones uh, either from MPP to enterprise software or vice versa does require a migration license. Now, the Flex plan includes one migration license per user. So where some people are going to incur extra charges is either when a user has more than one phone that, that needs to be migrated because they only have one user license to do that migration, or they decide to migrate a phone back to enterprise software after migrating to the MPP software. So the moral to this story is do not migrate your phone unless you know for sure that that's what you want to do. Otherwise, you could incur a charge to have to convert that phone back to the previous software version. The WebEx Calling Solution now offers three different PSTN options. So this is something that's significant about the new WebEx Calling Solution from the old Spark Calling Solution. The newest BYOC cloud-connected PSTN option with WebEx Calling allows customers to choose from a growing list of global CCP PSTN partners and then connect their preferred calling plan directly to the WebEx platform, providing a simple cloud-native PSTN solution uh, with WebEx Calling. So this is in layman's terms, essentially the same thing you had with the old Spark calling, right? When you sign up for the service, you select who you want your cloud PSTN service provider to be. They make all the connections on the back end. You never see that happening. They can connect you out to the PSTN and assign you numbers and all of that. You can do number porting with it and all of that as well. Great for smaller, newer customers, right? Uh, Cisco is excited to have NTT and IntelliPeer on board as two of the first partners in the CCP program, and they are trying to add additional partners globally so that this solution or this uh, particular uh, PSTN option can be offered on a more universal scale across the globe. Now, for customers who already have a PSTN carrier or on um, on premise then and they want to continue to use that PSTN provider then they can use what's called the local gateway option which I described a minute ago um, and
And so in addition to the BYOC CCP option, Cisco will continue to offer the BYOC local gateway option for customers who want to procure their own PSTN services separately. This option gives the customers the ability to buy WebEx calling with PSTN service uh, provided by virtually any carrier in the world, right? Because you're just using a local gateway to make that connection. Uh, benefits of BYOC local gateway options include uh, ultimate flexibility because there's no restrictions on PSTN providers. Flexibility to serve any hard to reach branch office. Uh, leverage existing local gateways to connect out to WebEx calling. Now for large customers with multiple sites, WebEx calling allows you to choose your carrier and PSTN connection strategy on a site-by-site -site basis, delivering a seamless and secure calling experience regardless of the configuration. So for example, let's say you've purchased a WebEx calling um, uh, solution with bundled calling plan from your favorite service provider in North America, but you have one site in Europe where they can't offer uh, those services. So with WebEx calling, uh, you're free to enter into a different PSTN agreement for that branch office location and then connect your PSTN services with a local gateway option or CCP partner uh, that operates in that country. So best of all, any site, regardless of configuration, can be managed centrally through the WebEx Control Hub. So key here is now there's options, right? Uh, local gateway is always available. Then they added the CCP uh, uh, option in there, and now you can bundle it up and set it up any way you need to in order to service all of your different site locations. Yeah, so someone even commented they, they use the support function the most. That must have been earlier we are talking about uh, WebEx Support Center, so that's awesome. Sorry I didn't see that comment until late. <laughs> All right, so those are your different uh, WebEx solutions. We talked about WebEx meetings, uh, WebEx teams, and WebEx calling. Now let's uh, look at some of the WebEx hybrid integrations. Um, there are uh, three main components. Oh, sorry, here we go. Uh, so this slide lists all the different hybrid services available through the WebEx solution today. Some of these services warrant a deeper discussion than what we'll be able to go into during this course. However, many of the hybrid services will be discussed throughout the remainder of this course. So that's what we're going to spend most of the rest of the time today and tomorrow going through. Each of the hybrid services is enabled through connectors that are deployed and managed by the organization's administrator. These connectors could be deployed in various locations. They're not all deployed in the same location. So for example, the directory connectors deployed on the server running Active Directory or on a computer being managed by Active Directory. However, the CMR hybrid uh, connector is embedded in the video mesh node itself. So when you install video mesh, it has the ability to communicate directly with the WebEx Control Hub. You don't have to install a connector anywhere else. Most of the connectors are installed, though, on a single or clustered Expressway core server, which are often dedicated uh, for use with those connectors. And so we refer to these servers, uh, or you will see Cisco refer to these servers in their documentation, as Expressway Core Connector Hosts, or Expressway C Connector Hosts, uh, throughout those Cisco documents. Uh, an organization can choose to deploy one or more of these services, depending on uh, the needs uh, and what's available on-premise in terms of services that they use. So uh, a lot of different options here that can be used in conjunction with one another or independent of one another. So today there are four connectors that enable hybrid services through the Expressway C, and they are the management connector, messaging connector, calendar connector for on-premise Microsoft Exchange, and uh, call connector. 
This architecture enables an organization to use its current on-premise network to support Cisco collaboration cloud integration while also providing a high availability uh, for these services. High availability is achieved through service clustering in order to maintain the WebEx experience in the event you do have a service failure. The deployment uh, articulated in this class includes a firewall traversal architecture with Cisco Expressway Core and Expressway Edge. The Expressway Edge deployment is part of the Collaboration Edge preferred architecture and in the context of this class is also used for the call signaling and media aspects of hybrid call service. Deployments not using hybrid call services don't necessarily need the Expressway E. For example, uh, Video Mesh has the ability to communicate directly to WebEx Control Hub even when it comes to calls, handling calls, and therefore the calls are not re redirected through the Expressway Core and the Expressway Edge. We'll see that later tomorrow when we get into Video Mesh. The connectors running on the Expressway C connector host as shown in the figure uh, on this slide. Uh, connect back to the WebEx Control Hub through direct HTTPS connections that do not traverse the Expressway E either. So just in terms of connectors communicating to WebEx Control Hub, the Expressway E is not needed for that communication. Cisco recommends that the Expressway C server or cluster that hosts the connectors run as a dedicated node or cluster. Um, business to business and mobile remote access services can be hosted on the same Expressway C and E cluster pair that's also used for call signaling and media related to hybrid call services as shown in this figure. So what we're saying here essentially is if you're going to set up hybrid integrations, it's better to have an Expressway C connector host, uh, whether it be a single server or a cluster of servers dedicated to these connector services so that the resources on those servers aren't depleted processing calls and therefore the connectors fail, right? And so what you want to do is have this server, the connect Expressway C connector host, separate from the Expressway C that works in conjunction with the Expressway E for media traversal. Uh, now, can it be on the same server? That's the question I always get asked when I do these WebEx classes. And the answer to that is yes, it can be the same server. But again, if you put it on the same server, you could have resource starvation occur when multiple calls are going on at the same time connectors are trying to communicate and therefore there are certain things that aren't going to work and you're going to have issues, right? So best practice, what Cisco recommends, make it dedicated, right? There is a, uh, this server, the VM to build this server is free. You can run all these connector services without having to license it. So there's no extra cost to a company to build that server. So why not just build it? and use it dedicated, right? Because there's no extra cost there. All right, oops, there we go. The WebEx Control Hub is the management interface for the entire WebEx solution, including WebEx meetings, WebEx teams, and WebEx calling. Administrators use the WebEx Control Hub to import and add users, provision user capabilities, and register phones and endpoints. The control hub is also used for all hybrid integrations, plus there are some reporting and analytics tools available through the WebEx Control Hub web interface. The best part is that the WebEx Control Hub cloud is cloud-based, so um, it can be accessed from anywhere in the world as long as you have uh, internet connection. So that's pretty cool. All right, so let's get into some of these different um, connectors specifically. The hybrid directory service connects Microsoft Active Directory 
and Azure Active Directory to the WebEx teams and enables users to see all company contacts in the Cisco WebEx Teams app so that they can click to meet, message, or call any of those participants. It also provides user synchronization between Microsoft Active Directory and WebEx user management. Hybrid Directory service simplifies excuse me, the administrative experience by automatically synchronizing Microsoft Active Directory users with WebEx so that users are always current in the WebEx team space. And that allows the administrator to create users, update user information, or even delete users when they leave the company. The management connector is installed automatically on the Expressway C connector host when the first hybrid connection is set up. The purpose of the management connector is to maintain a connection between the Expressway C connector host and the WebEx control hub. When other connectors need updated, the management connector is used to push updates to those connectors. Um, now, although Cisco does recommend that the connector host be dedicated, uh, again, uh, it, it doesn't have to be dedicated. Uh, however, and I, I said this before, there's a base version of the Expressway C available for free. So there's no capital expense for companies to be able to invest, uh, that companies have to invest in, in order to stand up a connector host instance. So why not just do that? The hybrid calendar service integrates your on-premise Microsoft Exchange, Office 365, or Google Calendar with Cisco WebEx Teams and Cisco WebEx meeting capabilities. Hybrid calendar service easily and automatically creates a Cisco WebEx Teams workspace whenever you're scheduling meetings. So for example, by adding the phrase at WebEx colon space, to a meeting invitation location field will automatically create not only a, a Cisco WebEx Teams workspace, but it'll also populate the meeting join information for the meeting invitation. If no workspace is needed, you could just add the phrase at WebEx by itself to the, uh, to the location field of the meeting invite, and it'll just populate the meeting join information without creating a workspace also in WebEx Teams. Hybrid calendar service also allows WebEx users to be able to uh, press the single button to push join button uh, when you're adding endpoints uh, into a meeting or inviting endpoints to a meeting uh, in order for them to more easily join into those meetings. Uh, so. Um, that provides uh, benefits such as uh, the simplest meeting schedules on the market. Um, to, to schedule meetings, you simply add at WebEx colon space or at WebEx to a meeting invitation, and then uh, meeting details are automatically populated. Another benefit to calendar integration is simple and fast joining. Users can schedule team meetings from a space or Cisco WebEx meeting in their calendar and then can join directly from WebEx Teams app or Cisco video device using uh, the join button. There's a single button to push, bam, they join in the meeting. Another benefit uh, is the calendar integration itself. Cisco WebEx Teams calendar tab lets Microsoft Exchange and Office 365 users see their calendar right in WebEx Teams without having to toggle between different applications. All their meetings and activities are all together in one place, and they can view details about their upcoming Cisco WebEx meetings and even see other activities on their calendar within Cisco WebEx Teams. So when it's time for a meeting to start, they can join it from the meeting list as well as clicking the Join button. And uh, it, it sets context related to people. The hybrid calendar service uh, Exchange and Office 365 integration provides two key use cases. The ability to see whether people are, are in the office, uh, office is one of them, and this capability helps people communicate more effectively and redirect communications and work if necessary. Um, if a user changes his or her 
present status to out of office in their calendar, then the hybrid calendar service automatically updates the user's status in their WebEx Teams application. The user's avatar changes to an airplane to indicate they're out of the office and shows the time frame when he or she will be gone. So you can actually see that on the calendar. So if you need to schedule them into a meeting, you can work within the schedule that they're available. And then secondly, there's the ability to see who has or has not accepted a meeting invitation, regardless of who scheduled the meeting. Cisco WebEx Teams, when deployed with hybrid calendar service, is the only service on the market today that lets users see the acceptance status of meeting invitees, even if someone else scheduled the meeting. Users can decide which meetings to attend based on who's going and who's not going, allowing them to manage uh, their day more effectively and to better understand the context of the meeting before they join. And all this is made visible in the calendar tab through Cisco WebEx Teams. So that'll be fun to talk about later. Call Service Connect enables simultaneous reading, ringing between Cisco WebEx and Cisco Unified CM devices associated with the same user. In addition, it keeps the user experience consistent so that users of WebEx has the same dialing habits, caller ID, and unified call history as any other user on Cisco Unified CM. Now, in order to achieve single number reach, the Cisco Unified Communications Manager Administrator must configure a CTI remote device um, referred to as the WebEx CTI remote device for every user's primary extension. For the purpose of this discussion, a CTI remote device is very similar to a remote destination profile. Um, the administrator can configure the call connector to create the WebEx CTI remote device automatically with the limitation that perimeters like device pool, calling search space, location, and remote calling search space will be shared between the WebEx CTI remote devices. So everybody has the same settings when it comes to that. But once this is done, call connector will automatically configure remote destinations associated with the WebEx CTI remote device on Cisco Unified Communications Manager in order to allow simultaneous ring functionality between WebEx clients and Cisco Unified Manager devices. So I have an example here for you uh, on this slide. When the user Bianca at example.com is provisioned for call service connect, the call connector will add a remote destination to the WebEx CTI remote device of the user via Cisco Unified CM Axle API. The remote destination will be in the form of Bianca at example.call.webex.com. Uh, the WebEx control hub will check that the string is unique and will prompt to create a new one in case uh, the settings already in use. When a user is provisioned for Call Service Connect, the WebEx Control Hub will know by the call connector that Bianca has an associated directory URI. The same user will have two addresses, the Cisco Unified CM address, uh, and the Cisco Unified CM address is set to match the directory URI or Cisco Unified CM um, such as Bianca at example.com in this example, uh, this address uniquely identifies the user in the CUCM on-premise architecture. And then the second address is the WebEx SIP address, and the Cisco WebEx address is set to Bianca at example.call.webex.com in this example, and this address identifies the user on the WebEx control hub. The example.call.webex.com is a publicly reachable subdomain of the domain call.webex.com managed by the WebEx control hub. So you can't change that last part of it. It's going to take your company domain and prepend it as a subdomain to call.webex.com. Now, let's put this call together. Lisa on premise calls Bianca using her CUCM device 
and CUCM will fork the call to the WebEx CTI remote device sharing the same directory number with uh, Bianca's device as shown here in step two. The associated remote destination will be triggered and the call will be sent to Bianca at example.call.webex.com through a SIP route pattern to Expressway C. Expressway C is configured to send any URI in the form of user at example.call.webex.com to the Expressway E and Expressway E in turn sends, sends it out to, uh, through the DNS zone. Now the Expressway E will query the public DNS SRV uh, resolution for the record underscore SIP S dot underscore TCP dot call service dot Webex dot com even if the domain portion of the SIP URI is in this example example dot call dot Webex dot com because the DNS zone on the Expressway is configured to use callservice.webex.com instead of example.call.webex.com. And this is done through the modify uh, DNS request and the domain to search for setting in the DNS zone. Uh, then the call is sent out to the Webex control hub and as a consequence both Bianca's unified CM endpoint and Cisco Webex client will receive the call and B Bianca will decide which of the two clients she wants to use by answering on that device. So they both ring at the same time, essentially. You may have some delay between them. Uh, I've set this up several times and used it. Excuse me. I needed some water there. Uh, I've set this up several times and used it. And uh, there is a delay, obviously. Um, in this example, the on-prem device rings first. And then there's a delay as that communication is sent out to the WebEx control hub before the WebEx teams or WebEx calling device rings, right? And so there is some delay there. Uh, same thing's true if you call in the other direction. So uh, you might have a little bit of delay. So in this example, when Lisa calls Bianca on the WebEx client, the WebEx control hub detects that Bianca um, also has a corporate account with the directory URI Bianca at example.com. And it sends the call to both Bianca's WebEx client and the Expressway E cluster located through the SRV record underscore SIPS dot underscore TCP dot example dot com. If this record is already used for business to business communications, Cisco does recommend specifying a subdomain of the corporate domain as the SIP discovery address in the WebEx control hub and uh, consequently a public DNS uh, SRV uh, lookup record. And so that record should be uh, the service and protocol should be underscore SIP S dot TCP dot hybrid call service dot example dot com is what Cisco would recommend with a priority of one, a weight of about 10, and then use the port number 5062 and then target to the URL of your Expressway E. Uh, detail of the Expressway E location are configured by the corporate administrator in the WebEx control hub so that WebEx knows where to send the call. The Expressway E and Expressway E are configured to route the call internally as they would with any other business-to-business -business call. So this gets the call into the CUCM. The call reaches CUCM and anchors to Lisa's CTIRD by matching the caller ID. And call anchoring is a mobility feature that is used to preserve calling ID and calling search space. After anchoring, the, the call is then sent to Bianca's directory URI, shared with Bianca's web, WebEx CTI remote device. Bianca's WebEx CTI remote device has a remote destination configured and thus the call is forked to the remote destination Bianca at example.call.webex.com. You see where the problem's coming, right? <laughs> uh, so before, before forking the call though, back in step two, Cisco WebEx Control Hub populates the call with 
the contact header perimeter call type equals squared. So when the WebEx Control Hub receives a call from the corporate network containing the contact header set to call type equals squared, WebEx Control Hub detects that this is a looped call and then disconnects it. And that prevents any kind of loopback from occurring. The expressway must be configured to allow contact header pass through though on the expressway C and expressway E in order for this to work appropriately. Now, when you're setting up the solution, SIP signaling between the WebEx control hub and the enterprise network must be set up to use mutual TLS. Any TLS architecture is a client server based where the client is the initiator of the request. With mutual TLS, both Cisco WebEx and Expressway E authenticate each other's certificates. Specifically on the DNS zone, on the Expressway E to be used for the call from the WebEx control hub. A TLS verify subject name uh, is configured and, the, and this name needs to match the CN or SAN of the certificate presented by the cloud by WebEx Control Hub to the Expressway E during the TLS handshake. Um, there's two ways you can set this up. Uh, you can do mutual TLS all the way through. So you have to set up a mutual TLS between the Expressway E and the WebEx Control Hub. You can set up mutual TLS then between the Expressway E, Expressway C and mutual TLS between the Expressway C and the CUCM. This gives you an end-to-end -end encryption call from the endpoint all the way out to WebEx and back, right, over SRST. The alternative, though, which will also work in this uh, solution, is to set up mutual TLS between WebEx Control Hub and Expressway E and between the Expressway E and Expressway C only. Then you can just set up a regular unencrypted TCP connection between the Expressway C and CUCM. And this will allow the media from the endpoint to the Expressway C to be unencrypted. But then the Expressway C will encrypt it and it has to be encrypted then going from Expressway C out to WebEx and back. All right. So those are two options to set this up. This is for your call service, uh, hybrid call services. there's no questions let me just hear a lot of beeping I think I have participants jumping in or join joining or leaving the meeting here so we're up to 65 participants so I guess people are still joining in <laughs> all right so let's uh, let's move forward oops wrong thing here there we go Uh, we got four minutes before I give you guys a break, and I've got two slides to go. So that gives me two minutes a slide, and then we'll we'll uh, we'll take our hour lunch break. So let's talk real quick about Video Mesh. Uh, Video Mesh, which was formerly known as Hybrid Media Service, delivers a better video experience by keeping WebEx video communication on premise. WebEx Edge Video Mesh enables industry-leading media experiences by providing a local instance of the media processing through the Video Mesh node software for lower latency and internet bandwidth savings. WebEx Edge Video Mesh keeps local media on-premise and joins local participants together in a meeting at the Edge. Video Mesh optimizes how participants are connected in the meeting and how they're connected together enabling lower latency, bandwidth savings, and creating better meeting experiences for users. It also helps with video quality. Uh, video Mesh can be optimized when used with WebEx Edge Connect. And there's also the ability to cascade meetings with the cloud. And this helps facilitate overflow capacity when additional users join a meeting beyond what the Video Mesh node can support. So we'll go more into video mesh tomorrow, but very cool product. A lot it can do here. 
Uh, the last one we want to talk about here is the hybrid messaging connector. The hybrid message service is ideal for organizations that have users on Cisco WebEx teams who need to be able to exchange messages with users on the on-premise uh, CUCM I am a present server uh, such as uh, Jabber clients on-prem. Hybrid message service enables exchange of one-to-one -one instant messages between a WebEx Teams client and Cisco Jabber client registered to the CUCM. Hybrid message service uh, enables Cisco Jabber users to see the present status of Cisco WebEx Teams users based on the user's uh, Teams client and activity. Uh, yes, I can pause the recording uh, when we go to lunch. That's not a problem. I'm not going to record dead air for an hour. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, so Cisco WebEx hybrid message service provides the ability for organizations with a subset of users. Uh, so we already talked about all that, didn't we? Um, all right, so organizations may be in the process of migrating existing Jabber users over to WebEx Teams, or they may be adding new Cisco WebEx Teams users to an existing Jabber on-premise deployment. Either way, Cisco WebEx hybrid message service acts as the messaging bridge between these subsets of users so that these users can be, uh, uh, be able to message one another. And this provides the organizations with the flexibility to be able to migrate users from Jabber over to WebEx Teams at their own pace if that's the direction the company chooses to go. Cisco WebEx Hybrid Message Service allows users to exchange one-on-one -on -one messages uh, and presence information in specific use cases. So uh, for one-to-one -one messages, Cisco WebEx Hybrid Message Service allows a user on a Cisco WebEx Teams client to send and receive one-on-one -on -one messages to one another from a user who's on the Jabber client. We're talking about on-premise Jabber. The user would be able to send the message by looking up the other user in the directory or from the contacts, because you have the contact hybrid integration as well. If the receiver has the necessary entitlement to both the Cisco WebEx Teams and Jabber client, then the message would be delivered on both clients. If the sender has a necessary entitlement to both clients and sends messages from the WebEx Teams client, the message would also be replicated on the sender's Cisco Jabber client. If the sender uh, uses a Cisco Jabber client to send the message, the message would also be replicated on the sender's uh, Cisco WebEx Teams client. Now, there's a, an indicator. It's called is typing. You, you see that sometimes when you're messaging with someone, it'll say so-and-so is typing. Uh, the is typing indicator is a one-to-one -one message uh, conversation between a user on WebEx Teams and Cisco Jabber clients. The is typing indicator allows the user to see when the other user is typing a reply. The indicator would be in... Uh, text or visual format depending on the client device you're using. Then there's the read receipt in a one-to-one -one message conversation between users on WebEx Teams and Jabber client. The read receipt indicator allows the user to know if the other user has seen a participant's message. The indicator uh, would be in text or visual format again depending on the client device. And then finally, you have presence on Jabber. Now, presence is a little wonky here. Uh, Cisco WebEx Hybrid Message Service does allow a user on uh, Cisco Jabber to see the present status of another user based on that user's activity on the WebEx Teams client. If one of those users is also running the Jabber client, then the presence that the first user sees would be based on the second user's Jabber activity. And this allows the Cisco Jabber user to know uh, if and when the Cisco WebEx Teams user was active before sending a message. 
The problem with it, and the reason I say it's a little wonky, is there is a delay with the presence when you're using the hybrid message service. Uh, and it could be up to a 10 minute delay, which means I might look at Alice's present status and it says she's available, but that just means she was available uh, within the last 10 minutes. She may not currently be available. So presence is not instantaneous when you're doing the hybrid message service as it would be if you're, uh, say, looking at the present status between two Teams users or between two Jabber on-premise users. All right. Presence is not instantaneous. So it's something you're going to want to keep in mind. So that's our introduction <laughs> to everything. Uh, at this point, it is uh, three minutes after the hour, or four minutes just turned uh, after the hour. So I'm going to stop sharing.